against the Cleveland Cavaliers at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. This is Kevin Harlan with Greg Anthony and Clark Kellogg and our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. DA, it's all yours. Thank you, Kevin. When I asked Coach J.B. Bickerstaff about Evan Mobley, he said his sole focus is, how do I help the Cleveland Cavaliers win basketball games? When you play the game with that purity of heart and then throw a skill set and intellect in, you've got a guy that impacts winning. He can do it so many different ways. Kevin? He can. D.A., he's special. And thanks for your report. Look at the 76ers starting group. Front court is Thibault and Harris. Harden out there with Maxi, And it's Embiid in at the five. And for Cleveland, the defensive pair in the post, Mobley and Allen. Donovan Mitchell is out there with Garland. And it's Stevens in at the three, the small forward. And Greg, the Philadelphia 76 have made it very clear that they are all in on a title run. And their front office has been very focused on trying to get top-tier talent on this roster. After the trust the process here, they're now aggressively pursuing titles here in Philly. And it's Mitchell missing. And the 76ers with possession. They defeated the Wizards in their last game. Yeah, and that one, their intensity on the offensive end was not matched by their opponent. That led to some easy buckets. Yeah, you know, you can't allow them to get into a rhythm on offense. Um, once that happens, then you're in trouble. And that'll start us off already. You can feel the tension in this arena. Boy, I tell you, you're right. You can feel this one looking like it's going to be a tight one throughout. Now, here's Garland. Boy, he just disappeared against Charlotte, and they really needed him. Allen finds Garland. Harden grabs the miss. Philadelphia's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. Harris outside. Good ball movement here by the 76ers. Maxi, another three for Philadelphia. And they don't want to get in a habit of giving him open looks from three. First quarter still, but not when you want to leave open. And here's Mitchell from the arc. Once again, off the mark by Cleveland. 76ers have gone two or three here to start out the game. Maxi passes to Harris. He kicks it to Embiid. Good. And Harris gets the assist. All these threes they're giving up have really been the driving force on this run. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. They get the rebound. Allen. And that one is good with the extra effort on the glass. And boy, did they need that one. Their first make in the five field goal tips they've had. Outside, Maxi. And here's Harden for three. No good on the shot. And Cleveland the other way now. The pass to Stevens. Down low, Mobley kicks to Mitchell. And it's Mitchell with the jam. So aggressive and explosive. Mitchell working above the rim and doing damage. Pass 
to Embiid for the three. Stephens pulls it in. You know, defensively, you just can't afford to give him that much room. They're fortunate that he missed that one. Mitchell passes to Allen. From 10 feet out, it's hauled in by the 76ers. And being that close to the hoop, I thought he had enough room to finish that one. And Garland, a finalist for most improved player of the year in 2022, took a huge leap forward with his play. They had a number of cracks in it, but came away empty-handed. First quarter of play, we're about three minutes in. Trying to go for an alley-oop, but excellent defense and anticipation there to stop it. Embiid finds Maxi. Now Embiid, defended by Allen. Again, Embiid missing. For Garland, he put in the work, and it all came together for him, G.A. And his shooting reached a tipping point. It was given the keys as a playmaker, and this is a great situation for him. And boy, he's made the most of it. Now, here's Mitchell. After the miss from Joel Embiid. Just five to shoot. Garland with the bucket. And the lack of effort to fight over the screen there makes that an easy shot. Well, I'm going to credit the screen. I mean, that's a good, strong pick he lays there. And Philadelphia decides to take their first timeout right here. Here they come, fans. It's your pass. Powerhouse Yankee. Jakob Pirtles check in for Philadelphia. P.J. Tucker comes in for Tobias Harris. First quarter of play and uh, just over three and a half minutes in. Here's Maxi, and he could not get that one to go. Out of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Ricky Rubio picks one up. And a closer look here at the scoring breakdown for the 76ers. Uh, they look to fire as much as possible from outside the arc, and so far they are hitting at a high clip. One other thing they've done really well, moving the ball around. They've done a nice job not settling for that initial option and making that extra pass. He hits one and misses one each at the line. There aren't many players with a quicker first step than Tyrese Maxey. And I love the way he uses it to his advantage, Greg. I mean, he's got an athletic advantage over most of the guys that are defending him, and he'll exploit it every chance he gets. But that quick first step and fearlessness, lethal combination. Now, Thibel, after Isaac Okoro, missing on that last three-pointer. Pirtle kicks to Harden. His three-pointer's off the mark. The Cavaliers trail by four. In the corner, it's Mobley. Misses the three. Philadelphia shooting a pretty distressing 27% here in the early minutes. Tucker finds Pirtle. And it's Thibel in the corner. Drills it from outside. And when Pirtle sees a guy on his team open, he finds him right away, whipping that pass there directly. Love with the screen for Garland. And he can't answer back the three-pointer offline. You know, he just has not been himself this period. Just too inconsistent up and down at the offensive end. The D just kind of stepping aside and letting him get to the rim. There's a reason, G.A., the lead is what it is right now. You know, you look at it, the communication is lacking, as is the trust. They can ill afford those types of breakdowns. It won't work. You can't win with those kind of breakdowns. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. And one thing that is special about Evan Mobley, made it a really defensive impact as a rookie. Something few big men are able to do. As you said, very few rookie big men, Greg, can shape a defense like Mobley did. Kind of reminds you of the impact Tim Duncan had with his defense. But Mobley can protect the rim and stay in front of guards on the perimeter. Boy, sky is the limit for him. Defensive. And good that time. And creating a little separation here, gaining some confidence. Yeah, you get the sense that they're going to start stretching this lead out a little bit. Now, here's Rubio. No points in the game yet for him. That one falls. Nice job playmaking by Rubio there. The moment he sees the wide open man, the pass is sent his way. Harden dishes to Tucker. Here's Maxi. 
chance there to push it to double digits, but it's off the mark. Well, you, you have to like their work on the boards, Kevin, particularly here to start the game. Yeah, I like the way they're setting the tone. Really playing with a lot of energy here at the start. Oh, here's Love. 11 points for him in that last game against Charlotte. Mobley, the pass to Love. Another shot, and Pirtles sends it back. Wonderful anticipation that time from Pirtles. Mobley. Positioning himself perfectly to send that one back. And so it's Harden bringing it up for the Philadelphia 76ers. It's a five-point game, and Harden with the stuff. Taking matters into his own hands. Yeah, we didn't expect to see that kind of finish. And you know, guys, when your point guard is making explosive plays at the rim, I really do think it sets the tone for the rest of the team. And so it's Cleveland with it. Philadelphia getting their last shot to go. Love, no luck. And you can see the defenders afraid to kind of get in his way a lot of times when he's on his way to the basket. But on that one, they were there. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Yeah, and that's four straight field goals now that they've allowed from point blank range. Can't happen. Substitution on the court. Seventeen seconds left to play in the first quarter. Obi looking it over. In the corner, Okoro with it. Kennard, the pass to Mobley. And Mobley throws it down. Mobley. And no doubt, they'd love to see him get a lot more of those opportunities. And that deficit will go away quickly if he does, Greg. Well, I like the way he capped off that drive. The one hand, full punch. And that does it for the first quarter. 76ers on top, leading by seven. And don't go away. We'll be back momentarily. so far in Philadelphia coming in hot they were sharp from the perimeter right out the gate well the player and ball movement has been excellent finding space operating in space and when they've gotten open shots they've knocked them down well there's one thing Greg that defines a modern NBA big man it is mobility and, and they've got to be able to move their feet and, and really play in space otherwise they just can't stay on the floor John in today's Wall. game so we Harden on the bench. Here's the five for Doc Rivers right now. Harris and Embiid are manning the post position. Backs you out there with Wall, and it's Milton in at the three slot. Some nice passing by Cleveland here. And with the ball in his hands, Mitchell attracts attention, then breaks down the defense with the pass. Maxi passes to Embiid, and the dunk by Embiid. He is such a great dunker. Greg, a high riser, no doubt about it. Nothing surprising about that, guys. We've come to expect plays like that from him, and still, they never get old. Mitchell outside. Allen with the screen for Mitchell. Wound up there for Allen. An emphatic LU jam. Allen always a threat, especially when you give him room to run. He's capable of banging it home. Maxi with it. Garland picks him up. And here's Harris from the arc. Another three for Philadelphia. And they're not afraid to let it fly from deep. They're looking to extend their lead with the three ball here in the second quarter. And it's Mitchell with the jam. And he just punched the ticket on that one. That'll get the job done. Powerful two-hand jam. I tell you what, if he's got a few more of those in him, this lead will really start shrinking. And he gets it to go. And Bede's got the lead up to 11 now for the 76ers. A much better quarter for them shooting the ball. Anytime your field goal percentage is in the high 50s, partner, you're doing something right. And it's Mitchell missing. For Philadelphia, they've gone a perfect 4 of 4 since the second quarter began. Perfect from the field. And the latest now from our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. David, it's all yours. Take it away. Thank you, guys. Now, Tobias Harris has been the leading scorer on teams in the NBA. But on the 
Sixers, he understands his role is different. He says, I'm not a guy who's going to press for looks. The ball's going to flow how it flows, and I just got to be ready when the opportunity comes my way. That's what winning basketball is all about. Kevin? David, thank you. Well, I tell you, that was double duty right there. He influenced the shot and then got back and cleaned the glass. And there's one area where the Cavs have been very good the past few seasons. That's the draft. They made some terrific picks in terms of personnel. And that's the kind of lead pass we've come to expect from him. And here's Harris from the arc. And it goes out of bounds. That one off Harris. Love check in for Luke Kinnock. And the 76ers also making a change. James Harden, he's checked in for Maxi. Second quarter of play with almost three minutes gone. Garland against Wall. And here's Love from the arc. Once again off the mark by Cleveland. The right GA they have, and the draft's been essential to the rebuild effort in Cleveland. And they've been so smart about it. You look at the guys they brought in, Mobley, Garland, Sexton. They nailed just about every one of their selections. And, and really, as the three-pointers keep dropping, you get the sense that the frustration is mounting for the defense. Yeah, and they either have been unwilling or unable to take that shot away. Yeah, they've raised their shooting percentage in this quarter, and they're starting to get on track. And they're starting to heat up is what they're doing. They're on fire. I mean, that's what they need to climb back into this game. Hits the three-point bomb. Harden's got 13 points. They knew this was coming. Harden can't just let that last three go. Way too competitive for that. 11 feet away. No good on the shot. A bit long that time. The 76ers leading by 10. It's in basket number six for him thus far. He has only missed two shots from the floor. Tell you what, he has been feeling it, guys. And the best game plan right now, it's elementary. Let's keep feeding him. Let him eat. There's Garland. Wall with some nice D. I'd love to see them impose themselves a little more on the backboard. That's a great way to find confidence. Always a surefire way to get back in the game. Well, guys, they need to do something to reduce this deficit. We'll see if that's the answer. Now, here's Garland. Harden missing his last shot. It's stolen by Wall. And, oh, here we go. Wall, nobody back. And it's Harden slamming it down. And Harden, an absolutely vicious dunker. Terrific at bouncing towards the rim for the epic throwdown. Timeout is called first of the game for the Cavaliers. Okay, everyone, let's get up and get loud for some peace Pirtles check in for Joel Embiid. P.J. Tucker comes in for Tobias Harris. And Matisse Thibel subbed in for Shake Milton. for the Cavaliers it was a loss to the Hornets yeah for that loss you can credit their defense or lack thereof too many breakdowns on that end of the floor yeah and that's really inexcusable I mean there's just no way that you can justify that when you don't put the work in on defense you're going to end up on the losing end the Cavaliers have had two chances at the line already making them both and they've had really good numbers all season from the free throw line. That's been one of the strongest aspects of this team this season. I mean, there have been very few off nights for them at the free throw line. Mitchell drops them both. At this late stage of the season, how hard is it, Greg, for teams 
not to look ahead to the playoffs and the postseason at this point. Kevin, just about impossible. I mean, if you're already in position, the trap you can't fall into is easing up down the stretch and backpedaling into the postseason. Now, here's Rubio. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring hit from him. Love, no luck. The 76ers leading by 12. In the corner. Harden, out of bounds. Cleveland will take possession. And this is where the power rankings sort of lock in as we begin to look toward the postseason. You take a look at the Cavaliers. They're locked in again at that third spot. Not a bad place to be. And seeing where the 76ers are, they've taken this ride all the way down the stretch. Few people thought they could maintain this astonishing display of dominance. For Philadelphia, they've gone 8 of 13 in the second quarter, well above the 50% mark from the field. And there's the call on Evan Mobley. That is his first foul of the game. And that rejection had some mustard on it. Huge, huge play. Sharp instincts on D there. Just timing. One to rise up and swat that one away. Kennard, he's checked in for the Cavaliers. Here's Harden. He had a career game last time out. Bucket after bucket. Well, he's found his rhythm from deep, and, and you can see the confidence. Yeah, I'd be confident, too, as a matter of fact. I mean, if you're stacking up threes the way he is, I mean, he's doing all his work from behind the arc. The 76ers leading by 15. Hey, there's no denying the direction in Philly. They want to win now. The Sixers have an attitude coming from their front office that they want to get it done now, and I like seeing that. Now, a Okoro, James Harden missing on the three. From deep, buries the long-range jumper. Harden's got 23. And the D has gotten a little bit laxed here, defending the triple. Rubio outside. Love with the screen on wall. Rubio with it. Now guarded by Burton. The Cavaliers again can't hit. Oh, man, still a goose egg for him in the scoring column. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Harden draws the double. Pass to Burton. Philadelphia moving the ball around. Harden outside. Fires from deep. And they get it back. Nice shot by Pirtle. And Pirtle has stick to itiveness on the offensive glass. He just throws himself in the mix to come up with those boards. To the inside, Pirtle with the steal. The shot, no good. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. 76ers ahead, running away with this one. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Kevin, thanks. Joel, as you look at the game so far, how would you evaluate yourself? I think defensively, I do pretty good. Offensively, I still got to work on a lot of stuff. But it's going well. I just got to calm down, slow down, let the game come to me, and we'll be all, all good. Hey, thanks for your time, man. See you in the second half. Back to you, Kevin. Okay, David, much appreciated. And now time for halftime. So we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. Hello, everybody. Let's start out with a look at the recently announced Players of the Week. And in the West, Luka Doncic. This isn't the first, and it will not be the last one of these awards for Luka Doncic. A master at getting his own shot, the world is creating for others, simply unstoppable on offense. Also, a tremendous rebound in his position. Now, looking at the first half of play in our featured game, what a disaster it's been for the Cavaliers. Well, they need to change their strategy. We can see that. Jacking up three-pointers left and right, many of them contested or from deep range, just isn't the way to play basketball, fellas. Thank you for being with us. Now let's send it to Kevin Harlan for the second half tip. After a very lopsided first half, 
We'll see if things play out a little more evenly here in the second. A fantastic game from Harden in this one. No problems fighting his way to the rim in this one. A lot of points in close. Yeah, you know what, guys? They gave him too many free runs to the hoop in the first half. I think they've got to be a lot tougher on him. Body him up. Be physical with him. Only their first turnover of the game, taking terrific care of the basketball. And that's one more key to their lead, guys. I mean, they're creating opportunities for each other and not the other team. And that one good. And the coaching staff loves this. Mitchell being assertive on offense and just imposing his will. The defensive pair in the post, Mobley and Allen. Darius Garland is out there with Mitchell. And it's Stevens and at the small forward. That's the five for Cleveland right now. On defense, the Cavaliers. They trail by 18. The assist totals, Kevin, just continue to grow. They're way ahead in that category. Ball movement has been off. Clearly just an example of a different mindset between these teams. And here is Mitchell. James Harden getting it to go from deep. He had a nice open look right there. Darwin has got five points so far. And an eye for an eye. Both teams working to stretch the floor. There's nothing like answering yeah, back. Me. One team gets three, you two. fire three of your James own. Boom. Uh, unwilling to let up, even for a moment. That's his killer instinct, just fanning the flames. Yeah, I love the fact he doesn't play the score. He just keeps coming, attack mode. He doesn't know how to step off the gas pedal. Oh, and they get in the way of the alley-oop. Not to be. Good play defensively. And B, the pass to Harden. No good from outside. The Cavaliers trail by 20. An NBA all-defense for two years running. Matisse Thibel has been a game-changing defender from the minute he set foot in the NBA. He shoots again, and Embiid lays it in. Embiid's got four points now in the quarter. Embiid right there to get the rebound and put it right back up. Excellent anticipation. Here's Steffens. He's averaging a bit over five points a game. It's hauled in by Harris. And Greg, we know at Washington, Thibel was the college defensive player of the year. Averaging three and a half steals in over two blocks a game. And per minute, not far off that pace in the pros. His opponent field goal percentage last season good for second best in the league. Right now, I'd send it over to the sidelines and get a report from David Aldridge. Thanks very much. In recent years, the NBA has opened several international academies. Commissioner Adam Silver says huge numbers of people are playing basketball, but unless you take the best at a young age, get them facing elite competition and training under high-pressure circumstances, they won't develop into NBA-caliber players. Kevin? Well, opening doors, David, that's always a good thing. Expansion. Thank you. Tell you what, the defense was lucky there. I mean, leave him that open from range, he'll typically knock it down. So you will not see that from him very often, especially right at the rim. And here are the Cavaliers now, following the missed shot by Tobias Harris. Mitchell in the corner. Pocket six. And Embiid pulls it down. Embiid's got nine rebounds in the game, getting it done. Harden outside, shoots the three. The shot, no good. So the Cavaliers will take it the other way. Well, I'll tell you what, he's going to buy himself a ticket to the bench if he keeps shooting it like that. He has been putrid here this quarter. Garland, the pass to Stevens. Mitchell kicks to Garland. Good, and it's Mitchell picking up the assist. Mitchell's got five assists in the game. Back to Harden. Fires the three. The 76ers again can't hit it. And he has been ice cold from beyond the arc here since halftime, and he continues yet to fire away. He has got to tone it down if he wants to help his team. And you know, when Allen gets this positioning, the defense is in trouble, which in turn forces them to commit the foul. The Cavaliers have been solid at the line so far. Four for four. So both teams changing it up here. That's off as well, so he misses both. And you look at Jakob Pertl, great touch and presence inside the paint. 
can get you with a move or just power his way to the hoop. Now Rubio after the miss three from Tyrese Maxey. The nine foot shot. Rubio misses. You know what? Those are shots you just hate to miss when you get those kinds of bunnies on a possession. And that one is good. Tyrese Maxey. Maxey's got 10. And Greg Pirtle has so many options to score inside. And that's why he's such an efficient scorer, Kevin. Very composed at the rim. Doesn't need a lot of time to get his shot off inside. Now, here's Okoro. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Allen at the screen for Rubio. And Kennard wide open. He shoots. The Cavaliers again can't hit. Here's Maxi. Score the bucket. He's made five so far, shooting a very clean five of seven. When you allow good scorers to get uncontested shots at the rim, no wonder you're losing. Yeah, you know, he should be getting extra attention from the defense, not less. Now, here's Rubio. He's a good contributor to his team, averaging about 10 and a half points a game. Guys, you know it. Timing can be the difference between an assist and a turnover. That time, Rubio precise hitting the road. Rubio against Wall. Here's Milton. No good on the three. And so it's Mobley with it. He'll bring it up for the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Wizards on the road to face the Magic this game. That'll be the latter half of this two-game homestand. To the left wing. And the officials call for a three-second violation. As the playoffs near, let's take a look at the Eastern Conference standings. Taking a look at Philadelphia. They've continued to play strong basketball, if not utterly dominant, as the last part of the season grinds toward the playoffs. And it looks like, guys, they'll hold on to that number one spot the whole way there. And, of course, the Cavaliers, two spots down. And I think for the 76ers, with the regular season they've enjoyed, it has to be wondered at this point if they're the team to be this postseason. You know, the way they've handled just about every challenge that's been thrown at them this year, I don't see how they could be considered front runners for the title. Here's Wall after the made shot from Ricky Rubio. The shake, and the basket is good, and he's got a chance here for one more at the line. Vintage John Wall right there, folks. The athleticism, body control, speed, next level. And guys, what do you think about the offensive approach we've seen so far for the 76ers? I'm in love with how they're moving the basketball all game long, and also their ability to move without the ball. That style just makes it so difficult to defend. How great have they been? I mean, shooting the ball from outside the arc, they have absolutely been lights out. Yeah, and it's offensive rebounding numbers that have dropped off a little bit the last few years, but Love still works hard down low and gets his share of putbacks. Now, here's Thibel. Let's the three fly. Rubio with the rebound. 55 seconds left to play in the third. Okoro dishes to Mobley. Count it good. Mobley's got four points this quarter. Philadelphia leading by 20. Inside, here's Thibel. And a missed late. Boy, he has to put that one away. A solid opportunity. Gone rock. Here's Rubio. Banked in off the glass. High percentage look there, guys. Rubio's best chance to score, and he maxed it out. And Wall kicks it to Tucker. Back to Wall. There's the triple. Kennard with the rebound. For Cleveland, they've gone better than 53% from the floor since halftime. Shooting 8 of 15. Rubio outside. Hit the crossover. In the corner, Okoro with it. Kennard for three. Headshot off. Got it up. And he got that one up in time, but doesn't go in. And so it's Philadelphia holding a big 18-point lead to close the quarter. And their ability to get points in the paint has made all the difference in this one. And we'll be back with you shortly. And there may not be a lot of drama down the stretch as we head into the fourth quarter, but stranger things have happened. The 
Cavaliers trail by 18. And so in the game for the 76ers. On the block, it's Tucker next to Embiid. Matisse Thibel's out there with Harden. And it's Harris in at the small forward position. Tucker the pass to Embiid. He scores a six bucket from the floor with that one. He's shot the ball 11 times. Well, you know, there's only so much you can do against Embiid, guys. I mean, he's such a terrifically skilled offensive player with great size. I mean, he plays pretty much through any kind of contact. Allen finds love. Harden against Garland. Six to shoot. To the middle. Love the pass to Garland. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Second. It's going to be on James Hart. And with the internet and social media, players Clark have so much more ability to engage with the public and be heard. Is that important? Kevin, anytime you can empower folks to share their voice, their stories, and be authentic in their own way, I think that's a positive. Player empowerment is something that social media avails, not only to players, but I think to everybody. Um, it doesn't just bring attention to the game, but also causes and commitments players have to their respective communities and issues that are going on in the world. So I think it can be far more good than bad when you think about the platform of social media. He's off on the second. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. Man, it's been a well-rounded performance. I mean, strong rebounding has certainly been at, been at the at the center of it, but it's been good on a number of levels. No good on the free throw. At the line for two. He hits the second from the line. Oh my gosh, I just got that. And here is Garland. On the wing, Mitchell. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Garland. Garland's got his third assist on the night. Harden dishes to Embiid. Back to Harden. Nailed from three-point land. Harden's got 29. A guy like Harden makes a coach look really good. I mean, you can rely on him to consistently give you big scoring performances. Pass to Stevens. Gets an open look and hits. It all started with the pass. That's what coaches love to see. Ball move. Timeout called the 76ers. Timeout for the 76ers. Fans, please give a big round of applause. And now, a moment to present the New Balance player of the game, James Harden. You know, from the jump, he was on a mission. You could see it. It was clear. Going after hoops. No matter what the defense tried, they had a tough time stopping him. I think he could have predicted early on we'd be talking about him right here and right now. That's how good he's been. Well, to come in here facing a hostile crowd and have a game like he's had, that's what separates the good players from the great players. Final quarter of play, about a minute and a half off the clock into it. And he drives in. And Harden with the stuff. Ferociousness from Harden. Looking like he wants to tear the rim off. And it's Mitchell with the ball for the Cavaliers. The pass to Stevens. Beyond the arc. And Joel Embiid pulls it down. Embiid's got rebound number 11 for him here tonight. To the paint. Here's Steffens. He's covered by Maxi. And it's Mitchell missing. One made three form for the game. Does he focus closer in? Let's see. Harden draws the double. And it's sent back by Allen. Boy, that expansive reach of Allen. I mean, so good at positioning himself and using his length and timing to stifle shooters. Donovan Feels Mitchell. to me like this team is going to need more from him, guys. I mean, if they're to erase this deficit, he's got to step up. The 76ers leading by 22. Maxi passes to Embiid. And Allen with the block. Garland feeling it out a little bit. And it's Allen slamming it down. And you know, guys, all it takes is inside position. As soon as you give Allen that, it's pretty much a wrap. 
Feibel, the pass to Maxi. Back to Feibel. Some nice ball movement here by the 76ers. Here's Embiid, and there's the block. Just stops it cold and takes possession. On the wing, Mitchell. He's covered by Maxi. Pass to Stephens. Three-pointer. It's hauled in by the 76ers. Harris has got rebound number seven for him tonight. That one goes in. Joel and Bede's got four this quarter. Showing off the superb handles for a seven-footer, Joel Embiid handles that thing tight. Timeout called Timeout. Cleveland. And Clark Commissioner Silver noted recently as the league moves to a more selective viewing experience, load management could hurt revenues even further. Yeah, you know, when more fans can pay to watch individual games, it's a bit of a, an a la carte system. I think you need that star power every night. And even beyond that, Kevin, I think players, all players, but particularly the star players, have a responsibility to try to show up for work every single night. And that really should be the mindset. I think it goes beyond revenue. I think it's just a matter of principle. If you have a job, you should be looking to perform every time you have the opportunity. I understand rest, but I think rest should probably be confined to practice, not the game. And the Cavaliers making a change here. Mobley's checked in. A bit under three and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth. With the floater, and Garland puts it in. They are just killing them on the interior. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. you got to play with some physicality in the paint. From deep heart. And a rebound goes to the Cavaliers. Allen's got rebound number eight here tonight in the game. Here's Mitchell and the rejection by Embiid. A fantastic defender. Embiid is consistent not only blocking shots, but going after him as well, especially when he's in the area. Well, he's demanding the ball. He wants it, and he's coming through. I mean, you can see why his teammates trust him down the stretch, guys. Passes it to Mobley. And oh, boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. And for a while there, Greg, it seemed like we were entering the super team era. But lately, homegrown talent. The players you draft and develop or sign and develop seems to be the way teams are going. Yeah, and it's not easy to maintain a culture when you're bringing in stars from outside. We've seen some cautionary examples here of late. Ricky Rubio checked in for the Cavaliers. And the Cavaliers with possession here. James Harden missing on the three. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Tyrese Maxey. That is his first foul of the game. Pirtle is checked in for the 76ers. Here's Allen. Rebound by the 76ers. Earlier in the game, they held a 25-point lead. And here's Harden for three. Buries it from three-point range. Three. Harden's got 10 points in the quarter. Learning to play off the ball with the guys like Westbrook and CP3 and Kyrie. Harden sinking the jumper. Here's Stephens, defended by Thibel. And Mobley throws it down. Going all he can so far, but they still find themselves trailing. With the assist. The three from Harden. Allen with the rebound. Allen's got nine rebounds in the game. Getting it done. Mitchell in the corner. Takes a three. Harden grabs the miss. The 76ers leading by 21. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. That one on Mobley. And guys, James Harden continues to be one of the most dominant offensive forces. Kevin, I don't think there's any question about it. No matter what city is on the front of his jersey, as long as Harden is on the back of it, you can expect the ball to go through the twine and for him to drop dimes, too. He's clearly one of the best scorers of this generation by far. Akoro's checked in for the Cavaliers. Luke Kennard comes in for Donovan Mitchell. Akoro passes to Rubio. Down to five on the shot clock. There's the feed to Allen. That shot is off. 
and Philadelphia the other way now. Yes, and, and with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who watched it, just a total mismatch and a true show of strength for the 76ers. This was a team performing to its uh, fullest capability. Uh, a, a hugely satisfying win. A, a, a game that not many will soon forget. And on the other side, one that I think most will try to forget. And the strong effort here will confirm to what will be their fifth win on the season. And bragging rights between these teams were on the line today. And they put in some very good work to earn it. Sure did. I mean, this means they'll come out on top in the season series. Two games to one now. Got to be happy about that. And one of the key components to this victory, if not the biggest, was the incredible performance for James Harden. Boy, he was absolutely relentless at the offensive end, guys. Smelled blood and went for it. And you can appreciate the fight now, but it isn't how they came into the game. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. They waited too long to finally ramp themselves up. Three. Saw the opportunity to put this away and did not turn it down. And, you know, this run shows what kind of attitude this team has. I mean, the win is there. Go get it. Mobley outside. And Rubio kicks to Allen. And the shot goes down. Boy, the big fella is so skilled. I mean, Jared Allen's jump shot is excellent for a center. Solid mechanics. And it really spaces the floor for him and his teammates. Coming off a big game, his confidence could be any higher. And Coach knows it. Showing no signs of slowing or cooling down. He's going to ride him as far as he can take it. So it's Philadelphia winning this one easily. This crowd was stunned by the manner in which their team was dismantled. You know what? Shocking. I don't care what the matchup is. You never expect a road team to come in and just cruise to the kind of win they did tonight. And now we'll go to David Aldridge, who's standing by with our player of the game. Take it away, David. Thanks very much, James. You have seen every type of defense from opponents over the years. What do you enjoy about that back and forth challenge? Just every single game, I'm trying to figure out what they're doing and how can I uh, be aggressive and attack it. You know, I love playing a game of basketball. I love you know, being crafty and, and just trying to compete at a high level every single night. You know, it takes a lot, but I'm built for it. And, uh, I'm going to just continue to keep going. Well, you won the chess match tonight, man. Congrats on the win. Back to you. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports. See you later.